Hi, everybody. My name is Faros Taifes Matian. I'm a technical marketing engineer with the Cisco's Cloud Networking Group. And today, I'm happy to be here to talk to you about the latest and greatest 480 capable additions to our next 9000 switch portfolio. So what are we trying to addressing with the higher bandwidth platforms? Not to spend too much time here, but I just wanted to give you a quick update on some of the trends that we see in the data center today that forcing our customers to think about upgrading to the higher bandwidth platforms and eventually us to invest more into 400 gig and even higher bandwidth ASICs and platforms. On the compute side, we see a lot of applications being built uh, utilizing AI and machine learning, uh, which eventually pushes these networks to over subscription. Um, on the storage side, we see storage becoming more distributed and even network attached. So all these distributed application, they need to access a big amount of memory and they need to access them fast. Efficiency is another um, pillar. Our customers are looking to build and maintain sustainable data centers, and they need to do that by increasing their bandwidth and while lowering their power consumption and even rack space. So with that in mind, let's take a look at Cisco Nexus portfolio evolution. As you guys are aware, Nexus has been around since 2008. And ever since we've been adding more capabilities and enhancing the platform, started with one gig all the way to our 400 gig announcements in 2018. As you can see in this screen, uh, we actually start shipping the first 9300GX fixed platforms that were capable of 400 gig uh, interfaces back in 2019. And we also release a line card for the existing 9500 platforms. Last October, uh, we actually shipped the first 9300GX2 platform, which gave our customer uh, 32 ports of 400 gig port in a single rack unit uh, form factor. But let's talk about what's new and what we just announced. Two weeks from now, we're going to ship the first 64 ports of 400 gig um, and a 48 400 gig port uh, fixed 9300GX2 platforms. And um, those are going to be both the two rack unit. And I'll get into the details of each platform in upcoming slides. But in addition to the 9300 switches, we're also introducing two new platforms into the 9000 product family. Nexus 9808, which can give us up to 288 400 gig ports. And we're also releasing a four slot version of the same 9800 chassis later on this year, which gives us up to 144 400 gig ports in a single system. Now, these two systems, the Nexus 9800s, they're also 800 gig uh, ready, uh, which when we release the 800 gig line cards, customers can just uh, put them in the chassis and they're good to go. We're also introducing a new centralized modular chassis. We call it the Nexus 9400. And as you can see, the line cards are actually oriented vertically in this chassis. And customers can get up to 64 400 gig ports or 128 200 gig ports, depending on which line cards they pick on this chassis. Now, even though it's a modular chassis, it's a single ASIC design, which I'll get into the, uh, that design later on, but uh, there is a supervisor that is built up uh, replaceable, and also there will be a switch line card in the back, which I'll show you in the upcoming slides, which means customers can actually replace the switch modules and upgrade the ASIC as well. Now at the bottom of the page, you see some of the use cases that these platforms are addressing. Um, on the cloud service providers, as they transition from their existing 10, 400 gig service uh, server NICs to the 25, 50, or even 100 gig server NICs, uh, they looking to reduce their power consumption per gigabits of traffic. 
for telco service providers, as they ramp up their adoptions to 5G, they often find themselves uh, oversubscribed in their existing networks. Enterprise customers also, uh, these are the ones that are developed in the AI and machine learning applications. Not only they're looking to increase the bandwidth, but they're also looking to use some of these advanced telemetry features that we have developed in our own custom silicon into the network. And finally, IP fabric media customers that um, they have these 8K uncompressed videos running on the 100 gig endpoints and they need to upgrade their networks to uh, networks with 400 gig capable uplinks. Any questions before I go to the next page? Good. All right. So let's take a closer look into Nexus 9300 GX2 platforms. These are Cisco's high density 400 gig fixed switches, and these are the additions to the 9300 series. Um, all of them are capable to operate in NXOS or ACI mode. And in fact, in each use case, they'll be able to be deployed as a spine or leaf. Because they're powered by Cisco's cloud scale ASIC, um, they have all, they're equipped with all the enhanced telemetry features that we developed so far. Um, that's your flow table, flow table event, streaming statistics, or even INTXT, which is formerly known as INT Postcard. Security is a big part of Nexus 9000 portfolio. So all these platforms will support MacSec and CloudSec. MacSec being your end-to-end -end encryption and CloudSec is the VTAP to VTAP encryption. Now the 9348 version um, is especially in the sense that MacSec and CloudSec is supported in all the ports, but the 64 per, uh, port version will support MacSec in the first 16 ports, and the 32 port version will support in the last eight ports. That's why you see the yellow color in them. All of these are uh, single ASIC, and the ASIC will uh, support up to 120 megs of um, buffer, total system buffer, and egress buffer. So let's take a look at the architecture. The relatively simple system one chip architecture, meaning all the ports are pretty much connected to the ASIC, uh, with the exception of ports that are uh, MACSIC capable. For those ports, there will be a MACSIC 5 between the ASIC 30s and the front panel ports. The 96D and the 48D uh, will utilize Cisco's GX2A ASIC. And the, 90, uh, the 32D version will utilize the Cisco's GX2B ASIC. Now I'll get into the ASIC a little bit at the end, but the LS here stands for leaf spine, meaning it can be supporting leaf or spine in ACI. And the corresponding number is the bandwidth of the ASIC. Now all of these platforms come with standard 32 gigabits of memory and 128 gigabits of um, storage which is pretty standard for all of our Nexus 9300. The two RU chassis, the first two, uh, that will have four fans and the one RU32 ports uh, will have six smaller fans in the back. Now let's take a look at the 9400 compact chassis. Uh, this is our centralized or compact modular chassis. Uh, I want to point out that even though we call it the modular chassis, there is no fabric modules in this chassis. It's a single ASIC design. Um, it's actually utilizing the same ASIC that we use in 64 and 48 port 9300 GX2. And uh, we get, again, if we use the eight 400 gig LAM cards, we get up to 64 ports of 400 gig, or we can get up to 128 of 128 ports of 200 gig, depending on which name card you use. And of course, customers can mix and match depending on their use case. Breakout is supported in all the ports. And um, again, just because we are use, utilizing a Cisco Cloud Scale ASIC, all of these enhanced telemetry features are available at 400 gig gig. Now the LAM cards that um, goes in front of this chassis, um, they all have MaxSec Phi, 
So we're going to be able to support MacSec and CloudSec on all the ports as well here. Uh, there is actually a field replaceable supervisor for this chassis and a field replaceable switch card as well. Now, this is a new concept. We, we usually don't switch the ASIC on the chassis, but in case we release the next generation ASIC and customers want to utilize the same chassis, they can take out the fans and pull the switch card out. Basically, it's a big giant heat sink. <laughs> um, the supervisor is also capable of doing uh, Synky on top of the PTP synchronization, and we support, um, we, the system has four power supplies, and this is all in four rack units. Now, some of the design advantages that we have with the 9400, it's only uh, 600 millimeters deep or 24 inches, and this is shorter than your 2RU uh, 9300 GX2, because they're, they're around 27 inches. Um, there's a, the switch card that you saw in the back, you can pull it out. It's a 26 layer PCP design and has a single row of connection to all these LAM cards in the back. The LAM cards themselves, there are two flavors, but they all, uh, both of them have a single PCP design. And that's done for uh, less complexity and better reliability. Uh, but you can pull it out and you can see the only difference between the two are the heat sinks that on top of the 400 gig or 200 gig uh, QSFP ports. Now, if you take a look at the architecture of this platform, um, you can see each LAM cards will be connected to the switch port via eight 400 gig ports. And um, even the supervisor connects to the same connector. And if we need to replace the switch port, we need to pull out the fans because fans are on top of the switch port. And again, the ASIC that we use here is GX2A. Okay, so now let's take a look at Cisco's Nexus 98000 series modular chassis, which we just introduced as well. Now, this is a system designed for performance, flexibility, and efficiency in mind. We're talking high port density while we're lowering the power consumption for these interfaces. Um, actually, if you look at the chassis design, um, this is the second generation of orthogonal uh, design. As you guys remember, when we first shipped the Nexus 9500 modular chassis, we removed the mid plane between the line cars and fabric modules, which reduced the cost of cooling and operating this uh, fabric uh, switch significantly. In addition to that, in this version, we also re-engineered the airflow um, so that the chassis is more efficient for cooling. We get 14.4 uh, terabits per slot. That's 36 port of 400 gig ports. And do the math for eight line, uh, eight slot chassis, we get 115.2 terabits of bandwidth. Um, and for the four port, that's, I think it's 56.7 or 57.6 terabits of uh, forwarding in the four slot chassis. Again, these are also supporting ACI and NXOS. And in the first release, we're targeting uh, the spine functionality in NXOS and ACI. And later on, we're gonna build on top of that. Um, again, security is a big concern in 9K. So we have MaxSec enabled in all the ports. So all 36 ports will run MaxSec in a line rate. If you take out the redundancy capability of the chassis, obviously N plus N power supply, uh, one plus one supervisor redundancy. Uh, but what's unique about this chassis is we get seven plus one fabric module redundancy. And I'll get into that. And also uh, graceful insertion and removal for the line cards. <laughs> if you take a closer look at the line card itself, um, it's actually 36 QSFP 56 DD. Uh, which gives us 14.4 terabits of forwarding. Um, as I said, there are MaxSec files in the front, so you have MaxSec capability. We also support um, ZR and ZR Plus uh, optics at 400 gig. And if you're familiar with them, those are the high range. You can get up to 120 kilometers, and they're used for data center interconnects. Now, um, obviously, if you use a ZR or ZR Plus transceiver, 
um, there will be more power utilized per optic. Now, I'll get into the ASIC for this line card later on, but each ASIC will have 108 megabits of on-die packet buffer, which is fully shared within all the slices. And in addition to that, they'll have a H a 8 gigabits of HPM buffer, so off-die uh, high bandwidth memory. That HPM buffer will be utilized for two use cases. Uh, first, we're going to use it for packet buffering, so we'll have deep buffers. Um, we also can use it for extending the routing tables, the FIP lookup. All ports are breakout capable. We don't have any restriction on which ports will be breakout or not. And uh, like I said, this line cards will have a seven to one fabric redundancy. So I've got a question on the breakout part. Sure. So these are 400 gig capable ports. Mm -hmm. Math says that I should be able to break it out into more than 425 gig ports. Is that just a limitation in the amount of space that it would take up? Yeah, you're limited to number of 30s that 30. each ASIC has. So each Q2 Silicon One ASIC has 256 30s. So that's where the breakout limitation. So that math works. Yes. <laughs> There's always 30s. <laughs> All right, if we take a closer look at the architecture of the line card, um, like I said, it comes with three um, Q200 ASICs. I'll talk a little bit more about the Q200 later on. Q200s are second generation of Silicon One ASICs, and each one is equipped with uh, high bandwidth memory, and each one provides 4.8 terabits of front panel facing uh, bandwidth, which for 36 ports we get 14.4. And they actually provide 6.2 terabits towards the fabric modules. And the reason why is because we have the redundancy in mind. So more bandwidth towards the fabric modules in case one of them fail. So 19.2 terabits back and 14.4 terabits in front. And if you take a closer look um, for these connections from each line card to the fabric modules, uh, we'll see that that 19.2 terabits is divided to eight fabric modules, and each fabric module gets 2.2 terabits. Okay. If we take an even closer look, um, we'll see that each Q2 ASIC will have 1650 gig lanes to each fabric module. Okay. So why do you have all of that connectivity to the fabric modules? Because we want fabric module redundancy. So the fabric um, the, 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 the line card will be line rate at 14.4 terabits, even if one of the fabric modules fail because the extra bandwidth towards the back. In fact, the chassis will operate even with one fabric modules, right? Let's say all seven of them fail, it will still operate, but it will be 15% line rate. And if you have all eight line cards, um, you can still operate at 115.2 terabits per second, even though one fabric module failed, right? Kind of the intent then be that somebody could kind of start with, you know, two or three or four fabric modules. If they're not fully populating it, they're not pushing all the, the bandwidth through, and then they could add more fabric modules kind of as the load increased, or would the idea be that you start with it fully populated? The idea is that you start with it fully populated, now that's for the 400 gig line cards, um, but we also have different line cards in the roadmap that not would, would not require all seven of them. Right? Okay. So it, it really, we're talking about 115.2 terabits of bandwidth, and that's why you need. And actually, the cool thing about the fabric modules is that um, you can, if one of them fail, right, you're still operating 100%. So you can go pull out one of the fans and um, you will see which fabric modules behind which fan and you can just pull the fabric module out, put a new one in, put the fabric fan, fan back and no interruption to the traffic. I was actually gonna ask about that because in the picture that you showed, it looked like there was like four modules that would come out and it kind of pointed that the fabric modules were there. There's four things, but you're saying there's eight. So was there two, but it's- no, so each fan will have two fabric modules yep. behind it. And you can actually, we have it in the showcase in Water Solutions. If you want to stop by, I can show you. Um, 
So if if you get the fan module there, you pull that fan module out because you're going to pull out one of those those fabric modules. Does the other one continue running, or is yeah. it like a there's an airflow problem? So it it'll stay running. Even yeah, I mean you can put it temporarily to replace right. it. You're not going to have the system shutting down because you pull the fan out. There's been some Cisco devices that have been a little <laughs> bit finicky. Not this when one. This fans one is, are pulled. This so one can't even tell you the better. <laughs> <laughs> So, so a question about the 9804 and the mm -hmm. 9808. Okay. Uh, are both of those today certified for IP fabric media? Are they we ready, actually, ready to so go for IPFM? We, we are targeting those customers first because those are the ones that, A, we need more bandwidth now. We need it today, yeah. actually. So, yeah. so that, those that's spaces like are list. prioritized, exactly. So, yeah. If I may interject for a moment. So at the time when we release them, one of the use case which we'll address first, it's exactly IP fabric for media because we transition from HD to 4K to 8K to 12K in a later stage, the requirement for higher bandwidth grows. Right. So that's main the reason why we need kind of this kind of chassis, which is having a large number of 400 gig ports with future in 800 gig. Yeah, I mean, as studios up right, and they're stacking multiple studios in one building, right, right? You're ending up with a very large IPFM need. Yes. Right. So that needs to be like soon. <laughs> yes. No. No. It's yeah. On the at, way. At first day when we release the chassis, we'll be able to support IPFM use. Okay. Cases. Okay. Yes. Uh, we're actually releasing for those customers. For <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Better work. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and you know th that's part of. As Nemaya mentioned, they're looking for upgrading even further to 800 gig, and this chassis will give them the opportunity to do so. All right, Cisco Cloud Networking ASICs. Um, we actually start shipping the first Nexus 9000 with our custom silicon back in 2016. And um, you might be familiar with some of these ASICs. You might hear um, EX, FX, FX2, FX3. Uh, but it was with uh, GX ASIC introduction that we started 400 gig uh, capabilities into these ASICs. And actually those two first platforms that we shipped in 2019, the 9300 GXs, they will utilize the LS6400 GX ASIC. Uh, but with the GX2 ASICs, um, we enhanced the GX capabilities as far as bandwidth and future set. And so we get uh, 25.6 terabits on a single ASIC with GX2A, which is used in 9400 and 9264 and 9348. And also uh, GX2B, which is eventually half of the bandwidth, but more forwarding features, and I'll get into that. Um, and lately we add the Q200 um, Silicon One ASIC to the family, and that's also a 12.8 terabit. ASIC. And that's the second generation Silicon One ASIC. Now, if you take a closer look at uh, GX2A and GX2B, I'm not going to say the entire name, <laughs> but um, so there's a story behind that. But um, the GX2A is, um, it has four slice pairs and essentially eight slices. Okay. And all of these eight slices, they're connected with each other with what we call a slice interconnect, okay? There's non-blocking uh, connection between all the slices and that one, just like any other cloud scale ASIC. We get 512 uh, 50 gig PAN430s, and um, the chip can operate, it's up 25.6 terabit. And the GX2B version, uh, we don't have slice pairs, but we have just four slices, and each slice providing 3.2 terabits of bandwidth. Now, this is the one that is used in uh, Nexus 93032B, um, and um, it's half of the bandwidth. But quickly, last two minutes, we'll spend on the silicon one. I, again, I can spend a day on this ASIC, but this just to give you a quick update. It's the second generation. Uh, we also have uh, six slices in Q200. In addition to slice interconnect or um, on die um, memory, we also have the HBM off die, which gives us access to the eight gigabits of memory. Um, 
Now, the, there is this, we don't call the forwarding um, on, the for, on the slices of forwarding pipeline because they're not really pipeline. They're packet processors. As you guys are aware, uh, Silicon One doesn't have a fixed packet pro, uh, pipeline. And it's completely programmable pipeline. So we can reprogram the packet processor. And um, this ASIC provides 256 50 gig surgeries. And uh, there's actually two version of this one. In the line card, we use this one with HPM, but for the fabric modules, there is a lighter version. It's called uh, Q200L, which is exactly the same ASIC without the HPM, because we don't need to buffer anything in the fabric modules. Can you comment about the latency on this platform? So uh, the latency depends, right? So when are you talking about the ASIC latency or are you talking about the platform latency? Uh, each time you okay. is more so, concerning to me. Right. So each time anybody talks about the modular chassis, uh, latency is higher. Why? Because you're essentially going through three different switches. So if the packet is destined in the same slice, um, you do the switching on the slice interconnect of the line card. You don't even go to the fabric module. So that latency will be significantly lower, if not significantly, but you know, three times lower than if you go in through the fabric, right? And the latency will be similar to uh, many 9500 uh, chassis, right? We did some testing and it's around the same. And, you know, we've been talking about 100 gig latency, we talked about 400 gig, there's a whole bunch of latency tests we can do, but expect latency to be higher for two reasons. Why? One is it's a modular chassis, so you go through three, three different hops. And second, while this is a HBM um, deep buffer platform, right? Anytime you're looking at deep buffers, latency is becoming higher.